What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a keto tortilla chip. Why? Because today I was craving nachos and this is the best way that I found to substitute it. So this is what our finished product is going to look like and I even threw in a bonus recipe for a little bit of guacamole. So guys stay tuned till the end for the taste testing but first I'm going to show you how to make these. Before we start we're going to need to preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to just preface this video by saying this is incredibly simple, but it took me a long time to figure out that you can actually do this, which is why I'm showing you how to make it. The first thing we need is five tortillas. You can use the low carb tortillas that you get at the store. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not the keto police. Or you can use the one from my recipe. I'll go ahead and put it on the card right now. Then we're going to take these and we're going to cut them into eight. So if you use five tortillas, you're going to have 40 chips total at the end. Now I am using a pizza cutter and trying to roll it. As you can see, it is a bit of a struggle to do so. You can use a knife or if you want really perfect chips, just cut them individually. I'm just trying to save time for the sake of the video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two teaspoons of olive oil to a bowl. Now if you're only doing a few chips, you can totally take like a barbecue brush and just rub down each chip. But I find if you're making a lot of them, the best thing to do is just put some olive oil in a bowl. And then we're going to take half of our chips and add them to the bowl. Now I'm going to take my hands and just kind of flip the tortillas around. This is just to get the olive oil off the bottom of the bowl and to coat that first half of the chips. And then I'm going to add the second half and do the same thing. At some point, I will just take the bowl and start shaking it around just to give it a little bit more of an even coating. But you'll know when everything's coated. You'll see a light shimmer on everything. You don't want anything too soaked, but you don't want anything dry either. Just keep shaking around until it looks good. To bake these things, we're just going to lay them evenly across a cookie sheet, or in my case, multiple cookie sheets, but I'm only going to show one as to not waste your time. You don't need to worry about parchment paper or greasing it. The chips will not stick in my experience. Once the chips are laid out on the cookie sheet, I'm just going to take a little bit of pink salt and lightly sprinkle it across the top of the chips. Now these are going to go in the oven for 9 to 11 minutes until they look a little bit like the chips you see on the screen right there. You don't want to go too far and burn them. Now it's time for the bonus guacamole recipe. To start this out, I'm going to take a quarter of a white onion and chop it relatively finely. You don't have to be super small, but you really don't want large chunks in your guacamole. It really ruins a bite if the whole bite is just onion. Now that my onion is chopped to my satisfaction, I'm just going to throw it into a glass bowl while I work on the rest of the recipe. Next up, I'm just going to use one Roma tomato. Again, chop this up. I like to leave my tomato chunks a little bit larger than my onion chunks, but you still want them relatively small. Now that our tomato is chopped up, we're going to go ahead and just throw that into the same bowl as the onion. It is now time for the base of our guacamole, which is obviously avocado. So I'm going to add two avocados to this bowl. Just a side note, if you're going to use a knife to remove the pits like you just saw me do, be very, very careful. There's a whole trend on the internet and pictures everywhere, people slicing their hands open trying to do that. Just be careful if you're going to do it the way that you see right now. Next up, we're going to add about a clove of minced garlic, followed by around one teaspoon of lime juice. To that, we're going to add half a teaspoon of cumin, and half a teaspoon of ground red pepper. And lastly, we're going to add a tablespoon of cilantro. Again, I keep the dried stuff on hand because I can't use the fresh stuff fast enough, but fresh definitely tastes better. And I forgot to add this when we were chopping our earlier vegetables, but I'm going to add between a quarter and a half of a jalapeno, diced very, very finely, right into this as well. And the last thing before we mash it all up is a half a teaspoon of salt. You can go more or less, but half a teaspoon seems to be about right for me. Now to mash this up, you can use like a potato masher, 
but I find that it crushes your tomatoes too much. So what I like to do is use a fork and pin down each section of avocado, and then use my other fork to kind of tear it apart. Then I'll mix it all together and give it one final pass just to make sure there aren't any massive chunks of avocado. This way it kind of preserves the texture a little bit better than if I were to just go in there with a potato masher. And here is our finished product as far as the video is concerned, some chips and guacamole. I did make some nachos and I'll show it at the very end of the video if you're curious. And now that you guys have seen how ridiculously easy it is to make these, it is time for the taste test. But instead of sitting here trying to balance and train dip it, I'm just going to dip it right off the counter here. So I got a chip, a little bit of guacamole, and let's taste it. Now this is by far the best substitute for a tortilla chip that I have ever tried on keto. I have tried pork rinds, I have tried jicama, I have tried using fathead dough. Nothing gives me the same texture that a potato chip has. But these come really, really close. And obviously, it'll satisfy my craving. So if you guys like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment sections. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, show some love, and besides, you get to see more awesome recipes like this. But with that, I will see you in the next one.